Let's talk about video games. Autonomous entertainment has existed for ages. Let's look back to the pinball machines of the 1800s and ahead to the 1958 classic Tennis for Two. Yet it wasn't until the 1977 release of the classic Atari 2600 gaming system that the modern video game industry was born. The Atari was the first commercially successful dedicated video game system. It introduced the idea of a single console designed for playing relatively inexpensive, interchangeable games. The system spawned hundreds of developers who made their own games, and encouraged dozens of copycat consoles to compete with Atari's newly created market. And it didn't take long for things to get out of hand. When the movie E.T. broke box office records in the summer of 1982, Universal Studios rushed to release an Atari game to meet holiday season sales. The short time span of the deal only allowed six weeks to create and develop the game. The E.T. video game ended up being terrible. The player just walked around randomly until they fell into a hole, which is, ironically, where the game ended up. Universal and Atari had so grossly misjudged the game's popularity that retailers ended up with around 3 million unsellable copies, which were eventually, according to rumor, buried in a massive grave at a New Mexico landfill. This failure of the Atari 2600ET game was considered by many gaming industry experts to be the butterfly wing flap that contributed to a domino effect, leading up to the crash of the entire video game market in the early 1980s. Retailers saw Atari's overestimated sales projections as a sign that video games were a dying fad, and by 1983 very few major retailers were willing to sell any games or consoles at all. And that would be it. Kids would never be interested in video games again. Thick robots. Amazing, splendid, plastic, robotic operating buddies that can slowly pick up very specific objects and perform very simple actions. At least that's the lie Nintendo told retailers. Despite the financial success of the Nintendo Family Computer System, or Famicom for short in Japan, American retailers were too badly burned by Atari to risk stocking another video game console. So Nintendo renamed their console the Nintendo Entertainment System Control Deck and slapped a robot on the box. This isn't a video game system, it's a toy robot! In addition, the system itself was redesigned to look less like a video game system. The Japanese Famicom had a design similar to the Atari 2600, with its top-loading game slot, but the American NES was remodeled to look more like a VCR or tape deck. And luckily, the scheme worked. Retailers stopped the NES and people bought it. Soon after the console took off, Nintendo's robot was discontinued, after only being compatible with two games. It turned out there really was still a demand for video games. Atari didn't overestimate the consumer's desire to buy video games, they only overestimated the consumer's desire to buy crappy video games. Nintendo realizing this even put a special chip in the NES that ensured it could only play approved games, recognizable by the official Nintendo seal of quality. And this wouldn't be the last time Nintendo would use draconian business tactics to convince its partners to go along with its risky ventures. When Nintendo announced their follow-up to the Game Boy line, a much more expensive Nintendo DS, fans and shareholders were concerned it would flop. So, just to simmer the heat, Nintendo also released the Game Boy Micro, a much less expensive, more accessible gaming unit. However, as soon as the DS was a proven success, the Micro was immediately discontinued. Because it sucked. Whether you're bouncing a digital ball with a joystick, playing tank, or even killing your family and friends in a bloody war, just remember, it almost didn't happen.